Howdy YouTube, today we'll be finishing off the rest of the tier list, so without further ado, let's just jump right back in. Okay, so, I think the next one's pretty fucking good, this looks like Lore of Life, I'm assuming. Put him up here for right now. Staunch. Okay, yeah, so, this low key is actually pretty useful. Bleeding will almost never come up, but fatigued comes up often. And being able to just get rid of that without a rest, I think, is huge. I think this is incredibly fucking broken. Explain. If I remember correctly, you get fatigue conditions for not sleeping. And then eventually you reach a certain point where you collapse and go to sleep. Uh, if I'm reading this, Jade Wizards no longer need to sleep. Uh, yeah, I guess in theory. I guess that's true. I would assume... And bleed conditions, at some while point, they rarely come up when they do, you really don't want a bleed condition. Because if you go down with one, that is a 10% chance per condition just to fucking die. True. Right then and there. Yeah, that's true. Um... I don't know, though. I feel like, uh... At some point, a reasonable DM would be like, all right, you've been up for 144 days, you know, you're miscasting on this, or like, like, I don't know. I, I feel like at some point, the magic, maybe, but maybe there are, maybe there are life wizards who have mastered Why? being like timeless, right? In, and in this world, there are mountain-sized dragon ogres that eat lightning. Yeah, Why fair enough. Why yeah. can't a wizard who specializes in literal life not just need to sleep okay fair enough and and i, I it's kind of like one of those monk things right level 20 monk D, &D timeless body ageless body whatever the fuck I, I i'll rule in your favor all right so i'd say this is uh straight up just an s you know, this is s here i think i think it's pretty good but let's also talk about the fact that not just not even needing to sleep there's a lot of shit you can do that accrues fatigue uh, from traveling harder, right? You, these guys could go fast and hard anywhere they want, pretty much. Yeah, um, they can travel at a constant top speed. Yeah. Potentially. Yes. Because their the endurance rolls, as long as they're passing them, even if they get their fatigue, they can just channel, hit that, bam, ready to go again. Yeah, and and it also deals with a, a couple sicknesses that give fatigue conditions. So even if they, by chance, get sick, they might not even feel the effects of it because of their magic. So I, I think I agree with you here. This is definitely S tier. This is any C- well... Being able to cast it uh, without an action as well in the midst of combat is amazing. Because if you get a bleed condition, that usually takes a full action for you to bandage yourself if you have the heal skill, or your party's medic to try to run up to you and heal you in the midst of combat which is risky for both of you i i, so, I would put it above amber wizard but below shadow wizard i wouldn't put it in s because it is only when you're getting fatigued which yes can be in and out of combat but it's not all the time you can literally be stealthing like all the time for for good reason too you can eavesdrop on people even when the party's just chilling in, in the tavern all, you, you could literally be stealthing. Oh, ABS, right? Always be I, stealthy. I'd say it's an A tier if the concept of it not being able to allow them to not sleep isn't a thing. But if they can not sleep, that makes them just... That paired with them being able to, you know, travel as fast as they want. Yeah, as you, long you, as they want. you won me over. You won me over. In fact, they, I'm even going to put it above... These are... Jade Wizards Shattered are now Manager. the masters of on-foot cross-country travel. True. These these dudes will sprint from Altdorf to Kemperbad without taking a breather. Yeah, and I imagine, you know, the, 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 the really fucking good ones, they probably have shit where, you know, they jump off of cliff, cast spell, trees literally reach out and, and cushion their fall, like gently, like, grab them and, and bring them to the ground as they fall. Like, off of a fucking, like, 200-foot drop. Or, you know, like, the, the fucking vines on the cliff, right? And they come out. Just any number of things. I, I think I think Jade Wizards could be very, very fucking crazy. Jade Wizards are the sleeper 
wizards of you think the lore of wizards, life think. you think druid you think oh okay they're not that powerful they, what the fuck is this fucking ad <laughs> i just <laughs> i know i hate it this is this is this is a uh, yeah they... there's there's multiple instances of in lore when a lore of uh wizard of the lore of life will just come up to like an, an enemy wizard tower and just infest it with blood drinking plants and kill you that way so it's the lore of life but they they're gonna find a way to kill you with life bro dude that is fucking any lore of life is like that guy who has the power to control fucking like dairy from mi misfits you think like oh this dude's a joke but then he like clogs your heart with the, the fucking milk that you just drank that morning he moves it through your body and clogs your fucking arteries with it and you die of a heart attack like he yeah like, it's a sleeper wizard. Yeah, have, have you seen that thing, by the way? There's a fucking... Yeah, it's, it's fucking crazy. I, I love it. Shook. He puts the milk on the immortal guy's brain. It's like, oh, sorry. You're like, you, you won't die, but you're fucking brain damaged for life now. <laughs> the lore of life's weird, not necromancy spells. I love the lore of life. Oh, you know what gives you fatigue? Rituals. You know what? You have SLs from channeling during... Rituals. That's oh yeah, that's pretty insane. And the Lord they of need life double rituals S tier. Pretty, they need like double S tier now. The actually, the Lord of Life rituals, if I remember correctly, are pretty high in cost too, because it's like the Fen Beast, um, which is like uh, thirty or something like that. Uh, Who's forty plus? If I remember correctly, you might be right. And then there's traits you can add on. True, true that. Yeah, Lore of Life is really. Like, you're going to have a good time playing them, but I feel like at the same time, you're, like, too good. But maybe not. Maybe not. Let me know, you know? If people have, like, experiences where they're... I, I do feel like if you have a Lore of Life wizard in your party, anyone playing an apothecary, physician, herbalist, or any healing-related class is going to feel very overshadowed and very useless yeah because yeah. when a party member loses an arm and you walk up to them and they no longer have a lost arm the dude who can only bandage them is going to feel pretty pretty obsolete yeah yeah probably yeah so just a heads up for future parties looking at their compositions the lore of life is the ultimate healer in the game you don't need to double up. You you really don't need to double. I mean, and that's the thing too. I I feel like the lore of life would be the person to be the herbalist, anyhow. I think they have trade herbalism. They come with pretty much all the skills related to healing or potion crafting and everything. So it's. So I you could literally thing, be. I think the only thing they don't get is surgeon, but their spells make it so surgeon is pretty useless yeah you, you, you could literally be on watch all night they, they, this is the lord of life is like dangerously good we there needs to be some some higher balance cubicle seven like fucking do something well i, I think they're balanced in a way they don't have many direct combat spells oh no they they kind of do dude the dwellers below a couple of other things i think they can shoot like spikes of wood or some shit i don't know and then, then you know, players can make shit up too. They they, they can also just take blast and bolt instead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I always forgot the arcane is ac you know, accessible by literally all the wizards. Yes, and and they're flavored for the color, so that that bolt or that blast is now a wooden spike or you know, an explosion of some like crazy like some plant crazy plant blooms and it's one of those exploding because you know those those exist right? There's plants that spread their seeds by exploding. This one just happens to do with, like, tons of fucking, like, poisonous needles or some shit. Something to do All damage, right. right? Let's stop giving love to the sleeper wizard and move on. Yeah. True. Uh, okay. Blue wizard, I think, is pretty good, if I remember correctly. They're up next. They are visions of trauma. Okay, this one is clearly at least A tier, just from looking at it. I'm gonna keep him there for just right now. I'd say Visions of Trauma suffers from the same thing Reinforcement suffers from. Well... It does what it does very, very well, because it also... Actually, I'd say 
put it in B instead of C. Because while the reinforcement just reinforces the armor and there's no overall bonuses, the Celestial Wizard has a lot of Fate Point bonuses and stuff like that, which are very good for dodge and defensive things. Also of note, uh, well, we should say what it does for one. Uh, you expend an SL and you gain plus one SL on dodging or melee against uh, avoiding or parrying an attack. It just says an attack. It doesn't say ranged attack. It doesn't say melee attack. And it doesn't say on your next turn. So I think you can keep that. You can store that. You can just do that have that can't and then just keep it because rules is written it doesn't wear off now as a gm i would reasonably say since they didn't say anything uh jokes on them right but as the reasonable gm i would maybe cap it at willpower bonus in hours right three to four hours so if you get a tag it's like you're seeing your vision of the future right it's your vision of trauma and or maybe you could do minutes but that that i feel like is like anal dm point where unless you're really like doing like a murder mystery counting, you're, that you're winning me over because unlike reinforcement, it's dodging instead of just reinforcing. So instead of just getting hit and tanking it, you're just not getting hit at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And in this game, it's better to dodge damage completely than it is to take it. And I'll just tell you this too. Think about the the Blue Wizard's real claim to fame. That one whirling blade spell that anybody who tries to engage you in melee has to take three damage, eight hits in a row. So you just walk into melee and you use this. You use visions of trauma to dodge everything. You use the blades to cut everybody up. And you're literally just like Morpheus or some shit. Just like, you know. And people are just dying around you as, as the whirling blade. It's some fucking Chinese wuxia shit where the, the flying blades are swirling around him and shit. I, I think this one's pretty fucking solid, actually. I, I would... I'd say put it in B pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Because it is limited only to in combat, combat but yeah. it is better than reinforcement at what it does. I want to make a note. I think this should be like a high B. There should Because like, it, it's not just what my, I expect. It's... Well, I guess it kind of is, but it's really good. But it is, I guess, what I expect. All right, B. B. We've got one left. It's the Fire Wizard. What does Sienna get? Let's see. What does she get? Lore of Fire. Brighten Blaze. I think I remember this one. By expending one SL of Gathered Power, any non-magical fire... Within willpower yards grows in intensity, so you can you can increase the fire on like you're the guy from X Men. You basically enhance the fire. Torch becomes a campfire. Uh, a candle becomes a torch, and so on like that. A match becomes like that of a candle. A campfire becomes that of a bonfire, etc. So it increases the illumination from fire, and it can also cause nearby creatures to gain to catch on fire. And gain in a blaze condition if the GM says they're standing close enough to be caught in the large fire. That's pretty fucking good. That's pretty fucking good. I'd say it's even better because when you realize that 9 out of 10 of the fire wizard spells or combat spells that set an enemy on fire, which you can then increase the blaze conditions by just looking at them for no free, That's no action true. taken. That's true! Also, it synergizes pretty well with the channel bo bonuses from Winds of Magic for Akshi. Because uh, fire wizards gain channel bonuses if they're near any out-of-control large fires. Ooh. What's a better way than start on a fire than looking at a campfire in an inn? And suddenly the entire place is on fire. Yeah. And you didn't even say anything. True. Now, here's the thing. You think that this might just be combat, but check this out. Uh, with this... Uh, if you have a fire wizard, uh, have him set up the fire. He only needs to buy what matches, which I think you get like five for a penny or some shit like that. He could literally light a match. You just have the sticks bundled. He lights a match under like the logs and then just uses this and that enhances the fire, right? And then it, um, causes the logs to catch fire. And then there you go. Instant fireplace. Boom. I'd say this is a low A tier because it does what it does so well it's a perfect distraction fire too. is so useful in so many situations yes. we learned in our first boss fight 
with Mr. Uh, Half Moon Face Goblin. Yes, fire is the cleanser, and uh, I mean, dude, it, it literally is like it, it can solve so many problems. It can be a distraction. It can be a weapon. It can be uh, you can it can help heal you. It can help ward off enemies, such like that. Keep the wolves can away. Help keep your troll under control. Holy shit! I just realized, dude, you could throw a torch and then cast this on it, and it would explode the torch to give people around the torch uh, a blaze, probably. Well, maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe if you put it on the guy, it'd become like, a fireball. An engineer with an incendiary bomb and a fire wizard next to him. Yeah. That, that might that, that, that incendiary would, that bomb would do it. into a fucking, I don't know, Moab. Uh, like, well... I would say I would put it on tier with like a, a flaming catapult like uh, projectile, right? It, except without the the rock, you you it would be like, ah, uh, gosh, I mean, it it would probably just like double or like one and a half times I think the AOE, so like turn it into like blast seven. And there's also a lot of RP uses in this because if you're playing a pyromancer, you're obsessed with fire. Yeah, and there's no reason, you know, if you're a pyromancer, you could ask the engineer, teach you how to use bombs, you throw the bombs, the incendiary bombs, and then you just boom, boom, boom. You know, there's, there's a lot you can do with this, especially naval, obvious, obviously naval uses with fire. Uh, anywhere in the campaign, I think that, this, this works. This would actually be disgusting in a naval fight. Just one I think this is S small dude. fire on an enemy ship, and bam, I look at it, and their entire ship is on fire. I think this is S tier, but below Shadow Mancer. Just because you can do so much with that stealth. Yeah, the stealth is useful in so many situations. You can sneak behind the enemies. You can. It's just. It's everything. But I think this. I think this is it. I the think Shadow Mancer with the new Winds of Magic rules and this new can are effectively the best infiltrators in the entire game oh bar none and I, I i would say yeah no sorry go ahead like i was about to say if you play a shadow mancer and you have the right spells you could sneak into practically anywhere you want that isn't like magically surveillanced and that kind of goes with their lore too they are the the they are the human the empire cia they they even infiltrate skaven layers and shit like that so that goes well with the lore. It really does. I think this is a pretty good tier list. The bright wizards did get kind of fucked compared to everyone else. While their can't does get rid of a pretty debilitating condition, it is such a rare fucking condition. The only things I know of that give blindness are um, critical wounds to the eyes um and taking certain substances to the eyes or looking at something that's super super bright exploding which is usually another bright uh wizard spell yeah or maybe a monster but the cockatrice will petrify you when he's using its head maybe but that's stunned not blinded though arguably it should be maybe both i don't know um Maybe that's too much. Yeah, no, uh, without touching too much on what the later things get, the, the Light Wizard does stay kind of poopy. They're mostly, like... I don't I don't really know what they're going for here. It's clearly an anti-demonic thing, right? But maybe, maybe the rest of it is better, and we'll explore that in another video. But I think if you're going to start out playing, and you don't want to feel useless... You can't go wrong picking any three of these wizards, but definitely talk to your party beforehand. Make sure nobody else is going for that same sort of character. Because they're probably not going to have a certain... But you never know. I mean, if you're stealthy enough, you could maybe do a stealth duo with the, the Shadow Wizard. It's not a bad there, thing. We have that going is, on right now. There is a lot of things you can do while having two st stealthy people, one of them being a Shadow Mancer. Um... I don't think there's much you can do by having two healer classes, with one of them being a, a life wizard. You have to be real careful by having a, a fire wizard around, because they're all combat. 
there's like one or two spells which are like I think related to smithing. Um, but even though they're all combat, they're they're throwing fireballs, man. Yeah, and if I mean you're, you're gonna town. have a good time. You you go you you pick the fire wizard because you know what you want. You want to set things on fire, and guess what? You get to do that. Like, you know what you're but in for. You also need to maybe talk to your party about that because if you throw a fireball in town at the bandit, you might burn down half the town, and now you know. The no, I, I feel. I, I feel like. I feel like. I feel like well, sure, I guess, but I feel like that's also the sort of thing that should be allowed to happen in roleplay. I, I would say this is not the wizard tier list. This is by no means a comprehensive wizard tier list. However, I think this is pretty good.